Okay, welcome back. This is shelf number three of part two of my shelfy video. So this one kind of goes all over the place. Uh, you will see that it starts to uh, populate with more recent Kickstarters and whatnot, and a couple oddities and, uh, and you know strange things thrown in. Uh, so there's no rhyme or reason <laughs> to how this particular shelf is set up. This smaller shelf is essentially overthrow for or overthrow for the larger utility shelf, which is completely out of room. So we will begin. Starting at the end here, we have the One Ring uh, Second Edition. Uh, this was a Kickstarter that uh, just recently fulfilled. Uh, as you can see, that there is the uh, the core rulebook, the GM screen, and the starter set. Uh, I did a, a unboxing of this and a uh, page through of, uh, of the book and a look at the starter set if you'd like to see it in more detail. And believe it or not, it is one of the, the most popular videos I did. Um, I mean, obviously there's no discounting the, um, uh, the popularity of Tolkien and Lord of the Rings and the One Ring, but um, it is one of those games which seems to me falls into this weird Kickstarter situation of a lot of excitement for when it comes out, a lot of excitement right before it arrives, a lot of excitement when it arrives, but I don't see too many people playing it. Um, and I mean, obviously I may not be looking in the right areas, I'm not all knowing and omnipotent, but um, I just, you know, just doesn't seem to be uh, something that a lot of people are focusing on. Uh, it's just one of those things where the, when there's this year long wait for a Kickstarter, um, you know, once it arrives, people are focused on other games. No one's going to wait silently for your game to arrive. And unless it is, you know, a gigantic fan favorite of every single person involved, most people don't drop what they're currently playing to focus on this. So that could be the case. Uh, next to that, we have uh, Vason, uh, Nordic, Hor Nordic Horror Role Playing, uh, the little deck of cards up there, along with GM Screen and you know, Wicked Secrets and Other Mysteries. Uh, which is some adventures that are based in it. I am anxiously awaiting the uh, uh, the the UK Isles uh, supplement for Basin. Uh, I understand it may be here within a few weeks and whatnot. Uh, I have played Basin a few times. I really enjoy the game. Uh, unfortunately, we had to take a break uh, with uh, with my players because one of the person involved, uh, she is a nurse, and her shift changed into the evenings. And sleeping during the day and working at night does not uh, make for fun role-playing. Uh, so we put that on hold and currently focusing on Shadow of the Demon Lord uh, with, um, with the remaining players until you know, her schedule changes. Uh, next to that, we have Casting the Runes, uh, Occult Adventures in the World of M.R. James. Uh, M.R. James is, a, is an author uh, that was brought to my attention by, from Keith from uh, Rolling Boxcars and Titter Pigs. Uh, he is a, um, a writer of ghost stories, and uh, someone decided to make a role-playing game based on that. Uh, Casting the Runes is one of his most popular books, I believe, or for those who know of him, know of that particular book. I think it is a collection of stories, of short stories. It, it is not a novel or full-length story itself. Not an authority, I could be wrong on that, but um, it's if you're looking for, you know, um, occult an occult setting, uh, you know, not modern today, modern, but you know, this still takes place in the turn of the century. Um, it is definitely an alternative to Call of Cthulhu and, and other things. There's no Cthulhu mythos in here, but there is supernatural and occult happenings to focus upon. Okay. Next to that, we have Cult Divinity Lost. Uh, this is a an interesting game. Uh, this is something that uh, is based upon power by powered by the apocalypse it is the second edition i believe a uh, totally different rule set um and it is one of those games where i can say without question it is not for everybody uh there is a reason why that there is um warnings splattered throughout this book and all of its supplements speaking of which i'm hoping to uh i did uh purchase some time ago uh some other other books and uh, the Black Madonna adventure from this. Uh, I am awaiting for it to arrive because it's currently backlogged through the company I purchased it through, so we shall see. Um, I love this game. Um, I, I am a horror RPG fan, and this goes above and beyond most anything I have read or done. Turns it up to 11. Uh, there is a lot of horrible aspects involved in this game, uh, but 
there, it's nothing supernatural as far as the horrible aspects. Most of the horrible things done in this book are done by you know regular everyday humans and mirror some of the atrocities and horrible things that can occur in real life. Therefore, as stated, it's not for everybody. Uh, this is definitely one of those where uh, not only is one where I can you know highly recommend that the not not only our safety tools should be utilized with this, a real heart to heart discussion should be presented with with certain people before you run this game because this will definitely bring up so many different aspects that uh, may trigger certain people's uh, sensitivities that. Um, you don't want to be responsible for, for that. Uh, it's definitely a game to have fun with. It is an RPG, and so these things technically can't hurt you. But uh, emotionally, you know, some people, some pe emotions are strong, and uh, you don't want people to have to deal with those things if they're not prepared for it, um, or have the option to step away from it if it's something they don't want to deal with altogether. Uh, that being said, I highly recommend Cult Divinity Lost. If not just, if you're not planning on running, running it, but just to read it, to get an idea of a different aspect of horror RPG that I just, you, you can't find in other versions. Um, speaking of that, uh, <laughs> next to that, we have Shadow of the Demon Lord, a different kind of horror RPG. This is a horror RPG fantasy. Uh, it takes place in, in a dying world uh, that is slowly being destroyed by the Shadow of the Demon Lord. Um, and as wonderful as Robert Schwab's games are, and he is and everything that he touches, um, one of the things about this that focuses upon is, is not just the horror aspect of the game, but the gross out aspect of the game. I mean, let's, per let's be perfectly honest. If you want to, if you want to focus upon why most people want to try out this game, uh, you just need to go into the forbidden spell section and look up such spells as, um... Uh, hateful defecation. I will say no more in this video, but uh, if you want to learn more, uh, purchase Shadow of the Demon Lord, or if it shows up online, uh, do a search for Hateful Defecation. And it's a, it is a fun game. It is an adolescent, childish, um, you know, 12 year old kid chuckle at poop jokes and fart jokes and, and um, you know, and other, other wonderful things in there. And, and, and like other things, if that's not for you, then it's not for you. And Shadow of the Demon Lord may not be for everyone. So um, next to this, we have Weird Science, uh, which is a, oh, what's the best way to describe Weird Science? Kind of more like a, a, a magazine of, uh, you know, a, a, a oh, what's the term I'm looking for? An industry magazine, uh, an RPG industry magazine, uh, focusing on, you know, different people, different aspects, different stories. A highly interesting read if you want to go beyond just the gaming aspect and learn more of the nuts and bolts of the hobby and those who support and create it and kind of how it functions. Um, let's see here, we'll kind of slide over a little bit. Next to that, we have Through Sunken Lands and Other Adventures. Uh, this is a, uh, this is based on, um, oh geez, oh, I'm not gonna draw a blank on that, but uh, without wasting much time, it is a version of Beyond the Wall, um, but this focuses more on the sword and sorcery aspects utilizing its rule set. Uh, next to this, we have my, my uh, Kickstarter for Neon Lords of the Toxic Wasteland. Another one I did a video on, taking a look at it when it arrived. Um, just a wild, crazy ride. Uh, you know, if, if, you, you know if, you're, if you just want a hardcore uh, metal throwing out the devil horns, uh, neon glow, uh, torn shirts, torn jeans, and just rock guitars and music and just balls to the wall, crazy action in a weird futuristic post-apocalyptic world. Uh, you know, get it. It is a wonderful roller coaster ride and is wildly supported by it and its fans. Uh, what do we have in here? This is more, this is supplements for it. Next to this, we have a reprinting of Night Below from Drive Through RPG. Um, I'm hoping to start that campaign uh, here uh, after I get back from Gen Con and looking forward to it. I am going to be using second edition rules uh, on Fantasy Grounds. Those rules are baked into it. There is a rule set, so I don't have to modify or worry about anything. And uh, looking forward to it. I've never run it and uh, I've never played it, but uh, looking forward to see how that experience goes. 
Uh, next to that, All Flesh Must Be Eaten. Uh, that is a, a zombie survival game. Uh, I picked that up at Strategicon. Uh, Jungle Tomb of the Mummy Bride, another entry from um, Levi Combs and Planet X Games. This is their DCC edition of their fifth edition game. And, um, you know, another one I'm, I hope to look through. Uh, here we have Monkey uh, by New Newport, uh, D101 Games. I believe this is his first edition of it. This kind of focuses on a, well, as it says there on the, um, on the side, a uh, game of the, uh, uh, role-playing game, a storytelling game of Journey to the West. Um, Earth Dawn, first edition. The spine here is being held together by Scotch tape. Uh, my wife is going to repair it. She is very crafty, and she did get a spine repair kit, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, next to that, we have Orbital Blues, uh, Sad Cowboy in Space, uh, uh, role-playing game. Uh, this was purchased or picked up uh, by a friend Debbie in England and sent over along with Warp Star next to it. Um, I have not had a chance to look at it at all. I did not back the Kickstarter, um, but uh, it is presented by, um, oh, what is what is the company called? By Soul Muppet Publishing. Uh, so definitely it, it has a um, Cowboy Bebop vibe to it. Uh, next to that is Warp Star. Uh, that is Greg Saunders uh, Ode to Warhammer 40K, just like Warlock is his Ode to Warhammer fantasy roleplay. Uh, next to that, we have the one of the AD&D splat books. This is Monster Mythology. I got that as Night Below recommended having it in order to run the game. Um, this here is essentially, I think one of my, I can't really say pride and joy, but one of the, one of the weird aspects of purchasing used games online, uh, Dark Sun. Second edition, my son and his friends want to play Dark Sun. And like so many things, they want to experience it the way it, way it was intended, uh, util, utilizing second edition rules. I purchased this as an open box and used online. If I remember correctly, it was about $69. Um, it arrived untouched and still sealed in the shrink wrap, never used. Uh, I debated opening it <laughs> or uh, keeping it sealed. Uh, as it stands now, it is still sealed. Um, I do have a reprint on the other shelf from Drive-Thru RPG of the rule set, which I can utilize, although I do, I would like to get maybe a cheaper version that may not be in as good a shape to actually use the flipbook aspect of Dark Sun, which I believe, to me, is part of at least the initial experience of you know the, the game as a whole. Uh, next to that, we have some supplements here. Uh, this was picked up from uh, a used site, and this says $29.95 on there. I did not pay that much for this. These were ridiculously discounted, uh, $8, $10 or so for each one of these. Um, let's see, next to that, the Veiled Alliance, and next to that, in wrap, the Beyond the Prism Pentad, and next to that, Thrycreen of Athos. So, continuing on, uh, almost done with the second shelf here, we have Birthright. Uh, this is a recent one I did a video of. I haven't put it out yet because it's, it's kind of in the can and needs to be edited a bit. Uh, this was a, a collector's pickup. Uh, next to Birthright, we have Buck Rogers, the High Adventure Cliffhangers Adventure Game. Uh, this was TSR's second entry uh, after the Buck Rogers role-playing game kind of fell flat on its face. Uh, this was Lorraine Williams' second attempt to try to um, capitalize on her ownership of the Buck Rogers license. These did not do so well, and there's a supplement next to it called War Against the Han. And um, yeah, I, I looked at this, I was gonna do a video of it, and as interesting as it is, it is a piece of uh, role-playing and gaming history, something that I would like to try out. Uh, I don't think it holds up so well as far as uh, current sensibilities are concerned. There tends to be a bit of a, uh, a dated racist tone towards certain things in there that may not be looked upon well uh, by a lot of people in this day and age, and rightfully so. Uh, but uh, maybe I will go back to it and, um, you know, when I'm ready to kind of tackle it and focus on the issues that it has. Next to that, we have the Asteroid Save the World game from the Mad Computer by GDW. Uh, this was a, 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 I guess, a board game, so to speak, is the best way to describe it, uh, but can be utilized and rolled into 
uh, your traveler game of the time. Uh, essentially, you were on an asteroid dealing with a computer AI gone mad, and you are trying to, I believe, either escape or shut down the computer before the asteroid makes its way to Earth or the sun. I, I, I don't remember. I need to read it in more detail, but um, there you go. And then next to that, we have Ravenloft, uh, Realm of Terror, the first edition of, or the first printing of the box set of Ravenloft. And next to that, we have Ravenloft, the second edition printing, the red box. Uh, these two came together as a bundle. And uh, together, these were well under collector's prices. And I'm very happy that I was able to obtain them. Uh, Ravenloft, was, I was a giant fan of Ravenloft back in the day, like so many people were and uh, still am, still am. And I look forward to uh, diving into this again in more detail. Ouch, my knees. <laughs> and then kind of what do we have kind of baked in here? And this right here, this is, this is the supplement, the GM screen, and the core rule book of the Hellboy role-playing game utilizing fifth edition rules. Uh, I did play test this game a couple times. Uh, it does play well. Uh, it looks like it carries through with its promise of providing a Hellboy-esque experience. I'm not 100% sure yet if 5e rules work for it uh, as intended. So uh, we, I will take a look at that in more detail at a later date. <clears throat> and then finally at the end we have uh, John Peterson's most recent entry uh, into his history of role-playing games in Dungeons and Dragons, Game Wizards, which discuss, you know, the um, uh, the the relationship of Gary, Ga Gary Gygax and, um, <clears throat> and John Arneson. So, there we are. Or, sorry, not John Arneson, Jesus Christ, Dave Arneson. <laughs> My bad. Throw that up there. And there we are. We are at the end of shelf number three of part two of my video and we're going to take another break here <laughs> before we get to the bottom shelf but worry not the bottom shelf is only half full and we will get through that rather quickly thank you see you soon